Hi everyone, this is uh, Savage Models here. Yeah? Just like to say hi to everyone and thanks for subscribing and all your comments. Much appreciated. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here at the moment just to uh, answer one or two questions to be honest um, the most common questions I come up with is how I done the concrete base for the dreadnought or the blood angel I posted up and so this is one of my video responses to that right here we go how did I do the concrete base, the painting on it? Well, this is one I'm doing at the moment, guys. Pet project. This is the uh, ultramarine base, as you can guess. And what I usually use is 2mm plastic card. And I'll see if this base comes out. And what I used for this, I don't know if you can see the proper colours, it's shaded as well it is, is that sprayed white, and the spray mostly used for white is uh, a car primer, a white primer from a auto manufacturers. The ones I use for UK purposes is Halfords uh, people. So anyone from the UK is watching this, I would recommend popping into Halfords, picking up a white primer and a grey primer. I find them really, really good. A lot cheaper than Games Workshop or Army Painter, etc. And uh, they're going to have really, really fine spray. And it covers the models beautiful. I've used all types of primers from airbrush primers as well. And I don't get on with them that much, but for some reason, the Alfred's ones I really do enjoy. So, anyway. Sprayed it white, then what I usually use for the main base colour is either um, Games Workshop Codex Grey, this one's been all airbrushed by the way, uh, or maybe like a Vileo, you have a look by you, a model colour which is probably something like a neutral grey. Oh, I got this one by you, which is a medium sea grey. Now, very similar to um, Codex grey. So when I, you know, put that layer over there, um, I go over it with a mixture of washes. Um, I don't personally like mixing. A lot of paints to get certain washes all down to f for argument's sake you you paint a model a month's time later you're thinking how the hell did I paint that and you can't and you realize to yourself ah oh, shit should have put that in a bloody book wrote it down somewhere <laughs> as happened to all of us so I try to stay away from mixing too many complicated paints so basically what I would have used was a once again, a Games Workshop wash, which was, um, oh, let me see, yeah, sorry, guys, Devil Mud, I watered it down as well a little bit, and I put it in the, the recesses and some of the bullet holes I carved out first. And 
wait for it to dry. I put another one, maybe one to two layers on. It depends if you want a bit of green, like regarding like a little bit of algae or moss on top of it. You can also use types of greens as well if you want to, just to water them down a bit, and it gives that stain effect. And afterwards, then I give a dry brush with a very light grey guys but a lot of you might not know about these paints and some of you will the ones I use and I use tend to use a lot of them are these coat of arms paints some of you might know already these used to be the company used to make the old games workshop paints and they're still in production today on certain websites I do a, a really big range and I have to say I really like them. I've used them for years and years and I get on with them fantastic. At the present moment the new Games Workshop paints I just do not like. Even though I use a mixture of ones from, from the 1990s up to the present day. But I use these coat of arms, some Vallejos and obviously Games Workshop but I thoroughly recommend you guys to uh, go out there and uh, pick one or two of these up now and then a company sometimes sells these on eBay but you can get them on a website just type in the coat of arms paints and hopefully it should pop up you can buy uh, like packets of them as well they, they sell them which is pretty cool and if it is uh, if it's one I would recommend, I use all the time for my goals, if it's metallic or non-metallic, is the Coat of Arms uh, Ink Wash Chestnut. I thoroughly recommend this. I don't know if it's good any days. I've had this for years and I love this one to bits. I'll show you some of the uh, outcomes I use down it when I'm painting up at the present moment. So anyway, I dry brush this with a very very light grey um, almost this is the one anyway I was showing you before it's like practically white but it's not it's very light grey so I highlight the edges then go over it and it gives this more of a weathered look over the top of it then afterwards, when that's all done, I start painting all the cracks in. And I, what I use basically with that, I start off first with a very dark, dark grey. And the one I've used so far, it's one of the darkest, is the Vallejo model colour, German grey. You can get a black grey as well by Vallejo and I got both of them and I just find that one a lot bit darker than the black grey for some reason <coughs> so I paint in the main cracks anyway you know with a jagged hand you know make sure you have a few shakes and afterwards I go back to the light grey or you could use white just to highlight up the bottom image just to give that 3D effect. I'm going to zoom in on there. So, and that's how I done it, guys. That's basically the way I do concrete bases. And obviously, this base is going to be fit, just put into there. And the one I'm doing at the present moment, like so. With removable magnetic heads.
see it lights better by here. And this is where I use that chestnut chestnut ink wash for doing my non metallic goals. You know, what I use to do the goals mostly. This is an old games workshop paint, but it's a very equivalent you can get. Probably get something similar guys. This one's called Leprous Brown from Games Workshop. And I don't think they make this anymore. And that's what the colour looks like. So I give it an undercoat of this first. And in the recesses. I give it a wash for that chestnut ink wash from Coat of Arms. Just sucks in the recesses nicely. And that's how I do the do the goals. And obviously at the main bigger pieces, yeah, I use like typical goals that most people use, which is snake bite leather, followed up with a mixture of different types of browns. It's tidy up to you which browns you use to be honest. But always think about it. Yeah, there's always the main culprit somewhere and with highlights up to beach bone. Uh, just a quick question if you want to send me some, something about this. This is nearly done, but my men are in. Shall I or shan't I do some weathering damage on him? Some paints and scratches. I'm not entirely sure, I'm still I'm in an hour in about him, guys. Yeah, he looks nice as he is, but do you think he look nicer with or without the battle damage on him? I don't know. Just imagine him sitting on that. Be quite cool. So, once more, I'd like to say thank you very much for subscribing. Um, I'm hoping in future to make some painting tutorials but the present moment I've got a problem with the software from my camera to my computer and transferring it to a different file format so it's a bit of a nightmare at the present moment with that but up and coming videos at the moment will be soon obviously closer and better video of this algorithm I've been doing um, I've got a commission Blood Angel uh, Dreadnought, the librarian one, to do, which I'll be painting in a different style to Games Workshop. I just don't like Games Workshop style how they painted it. I think it should be more blue than rather than red for librarian, especially if it's a Dreadnought, especially if it's a librarian, <laughs> and. Then I've got some stuff being sent over from Germany, which will be some Eldar um, vehicles. I think they're the ones from Forge World on their uh, on their front website, and he wants them painted the same colour scheme, which is like a turquoise and blues. Should be quite interesting. So, guys, that will be coming up. So there won't be any space walls at the moment for a long time. I'm sorry Valhalla for that. I thought you might be looking for, forward for some space walls, but there you go. Uh, if you need any help or any other questions, just let me know. I hopefully I'll be able to put them all in one video to answer them. So that's about it at the moment, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, leaving you feed, leaving me feedback, much appreciated. Cheers, guys.